Hi everyone. I wanted to talk briefly about a couple of comments left by William Tyndale on one of my most recent videos, uh, More on Morality, or More on Morality, where I talked a little bit about the Veckel G-Man and the uh, God sort of standing by and allowing the rape of babies. It really fits into the, the broader uh, biblical morality discussion, uh, slavery and whatnot, that's been taking place on YouTube recently. And I also want to say I actually very much respect William Tyndale and Mere Christian Logos for the type of comments they leave on my channel. So I, I want to make sure that you understand I'm not trying to insult you here or insult your beliefs. I'm merely responding to a concept that's being put forth to me that, that I'm trying to make heads or tails of that doesn't make sense to me. So uh, no harm intended. Let's go ahead and read a couple of his comments. Uh, God didn't create evil. That's a hyper-Calvinist lie wherein the tiny pea-brain sovereignty means force. Well, God doesn't have to force a soul to have his perfect plan realized, and the perfect plan accounts for, but does not actively cause, moral evil. Well, uh, first thing I do want to just say is, this is part of the issue for unbelievers. When you ultimately try to um, convince me that I should take your theology seriously, that I should ask God to come into my heart, and that you know I should follow your path, which William Tyndale does later on, when you're pointing fingers at other Christians and calling them liars, and the hyper-Calvinists are telling me that you will lead me down a road to hell, which they have done. This is what I mean when I've talked in other videos about the same thing, that if you had some consistency, it might be a little bit more convincing to an unbeliever when you're telling me that the message is so perfect and there's no there's no agreement, right? There's no consensus amongst Christians. I watched the Matt Dillahunty and Cy Ten Bruggenkeet debate earlier and a question was asked by one of the audience members to Cy Ten Bruggenkeet much the same way. How, how is one to come to any kind of a conclusion as a non-believer when you're telling me the message is perfect but you all don't agree? And he said, well, if someone doesn't agree, we could enter a Bible study and I would show them you know, sort of where they're wrong biblically. And of course he's saying that with the assumption that that would actually take place, that they wouldn't still you know, leave that Bible study disagreeing. And I think that's likely what, what would happen because there are a lot of very confident theologians out there who really believe that they've got the correct interpretation of Scripture and they're all pointing the fingers at one another. When we're talking about a perfect message, it's not all that convincing to someone who doesn't believe in the first place. So I just wanted to point that out. The other thing is to say that God doesn't create evil. I still, uh, I'm having a hard time understanding how you could make that case. Uh, implicitly and explicitly, there are verses where God takes credit for creating evil. But even if you were going to uh, interpret those away and say, well, that's not what he meant. Uh, if he meant calamity or something instead, which I think is still a moral evil, if you knowingly create hardships for somebody, um, that's that's not a morally good thing, now is it? Um, but of course, if you create everything, and you create the conditions where an evil can, can exist and can flourish, or become, and you have perfect foreknowledge, then if you create that existence, you are, by definition, creating evil. Um, he goes on to say, God is good and he gave us free will that we might know his love and justice. When you choose against all that is good, you choose evil by default and derivative, not rocket science. Well, I would say not rocket surgery, but that's just me. So the free will argument comes in and it's generally put forth as sort of a greater good argument that God wanted to give us free will and that was for the greater good. But in order to give us free will, he had to have the potential for evil. And I reject this much in the same way I would reject these greater good arguments from the moral relativists. Many of us will remember a while back, the Bible thumping wingnut had some videos where he was really confused and upset that some atheists wouldn't come out and say that rape is absolutely morally wrong. And the reason that they wouldn't do this, of course, is the moral relativists would say, well, there's a greater good argument that could say that I can't think of one, but maybe there's some scenario where rape might actually be for the greater good. Um, Again, these lifeboat scenarios that I detest, uh, save a, rape a baby and save the planet or something like that. And first of all, I reject that. I mean, I, um, I'm not sure how much greater good is accomplished when everybody's um, 
being saved is tainted by the fact that someone had to be raped. Obviously, you know, I think the honorable thing to do would be to say, I don't rape anybody on my account. I just as soon perish if that's the case. That would be the virtuous thing to do or to find another way out of that situation if, if at all possible. But ultimately, either way, that doesn't make the rape moral. That's my ultimate point. Um, just because it is the best of a terrible set of choices does not make it actually moral. This would be akin to saying, uh, let's say somebody comes to you and says, listen, I'm going to kill you, but if you agree to have your arm chopped off, then I'll let you live. And assuming that you believed them, that they were going to do what they said either way, and you said, all right, chop my arm off, you know, that this would mean that you wanted your, that, oh, Mike, Mike wanted his arm chopped off. It's, it's, the, it's the strangest thing. Uh, no, I didn't want my arm chopped off. And likewise, the rape in that case would not be moral. And again, in the, the Christian free will argument, I reject it on the same grounds that uh, this, this greater good, only, the only way that we could have free will is to make the possibility of evil um, there, that this somehow makes it okay. Well, it, well, it doesn't. Uh, I disagree. Uh, evil is still evil. And it brings to mind a question for me. Um, is that the only way that we could have had free will, is to make us with the propensity to do evil? And, and have it be a virtual certainty that we would do evil? Now, here on Earth, in our legal system, we recognize that if a person sets about a chain of events that any reasonable person, any rational person, could have foreseen would lead to the great harm or death of somebody um, and doesn't do anything to mitigate that circumstance, they can be criminally charged with negligence. And that's without the benefit of, of omniscience and omnipotence. So at the very least, what we're talking about here is negligence. And I don't think you could make the case that an omnipotent, omniscient being is negligent. I think they're just... I think they're just responsible. They're culpable in that, in that instance. Let's continue a little bit. These cultic beliefs that lay evil at the feet of a holy and just God are despicable. They are not biblical Christianity. Well, again, with the finger pointing back and forth, I'm just saying... If evil happens, the bl blame the ones who are responsible for creating the situations. I absolutely agree, and it is not God. Well, uh, think about the words, that you, the wording that was used just then. Blame the ones who are responsible for creating the situations. Uh, we're told that God creates all situations if, you know, he has a perfect plan. God is not raping babies or tying people to the tracks. People acting on their sinful lusts are. Well, okay, fair enough. Uh, God is not directly raping the babies or tying people to the tracks. But who is responsible for the sinful lusts? Again, the table doesn't make itself. We are created with, with the nature. And we don't get the opportunity to choose uh, non-sinful, right? I never got to check off any boxes. Sinful nature or non-sinful nature? <laughs> don't get to choose that. So, um, you know, we, we can't attribute all creation to God and then say that he's immune um, and not responsible for, creating, for the results of his actions, especially considering that he's omniscient. So I had responded to William Tyndale and said, you know, surely God could have chosen to create us without a sinful nature or not to create us at all. Um, and that brings about kind of an interesting thought experiment is the only way to give someone free will to create them with the propensity for evil to, you know, to make them, make it an ultimate eventuality. Would it have been possible for an omnipotent creator, and we'll use the charitable definition, omnipotent being that he can do anything that he can, that he can do, um, but, he, but that he is maximally powerful, he's very, very powerful. Would it have been possible for him to give sentient life forms will, free will but without the propensity to do evil, to have evil to be a very, 
very distinct impossibility of very, very unlikely only very few would ever resort to evil. Or maybe not at all. We could have a free will of choices, but we just, our choices would all be good choices. That they, that the choices would not be immoral. You, know, you could still choose amongst many, many flowers. You don't have to choose a turd, right? There's plenty of variety without having to choose the turds. Uh, William Tyndale's response was uh, that the best way was to create us good and with, with, with free will. It was our disobedience that caused sin nature. I would say by definition then we were not created good. Um, good does not disobey. In our discussions, we should not minimize in any way the fact that he provided a way out of the, we the mess we made. Well, again, ultimately he made the mess too. There's, there's no way out of that responsibility when you're omnipotent and omniscient. It just doesn't work. You might say you don't deserve this or that, but you know as well as I that if we were born perfect but with free will, we would eventually sin against God anyhow. Uh, that flies in the face of the definition of perfect. The only way this existence makes any sense is if it is God demonstrating to man his infinite love and justice. Um, I would I would disagree uh, highly with that. That um, I'm not capable of infinite love and the limited love I'm capable of is far more charitable and forgiving than that. And I would say my sense of justice is, is better as well. He goes on to say, not creating us is a moot point, because I'd said it would be better for us not to have been created at all than to suffer an eternity in torment for some, you know, 90 years of relative pleasure here on earth. Not creating us is a moot point, because if it were true, there would be nothing to discuss, and you, having known life with it, even with its many hardships, not even having wanted to be born, well, that's right, there would be nothing to discuss. You and I wouldn't be talking if we had never been born. And he said, the fact that you're still alive and have not committed suicide answers that. Well, no, it doesn't, because I don't believe that hell exists. <laughs> so my putting that forth is, again, conceptual. If I believed in hell and I thought that there was no possible way that I could escape an eternity in torment, I would gladly choose not to have been created at all. Better that I not enjoy relatively, 90 years or whatever I get on this planet in exchange for an eternity in torment and torture. I can't imagine anybody would, would take that take that chance, take that, uh, take that deal. I can't imagine a person who would. All I see in the hypothetical ways a man tries to un undermine God's love and justice is a way for man to not get real about himself. Call me insensitive or worse, but I had as great a hurdle in that regard as any man I reckon, so I am not just blowing smoke in self-righteousness. I am a worm. Sorry, sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but I, I find that kind of awful. Uh, I am a worm saved by grace, and I know it. We got a lot of good folk who can see the faults in everyone but themselves, apparently. And the shame is that many of them claim Christ. Well, again, we're back with the finger pointing. Um, I can certainly see the faults in myself, so I'm not uh, in Christ or whatever, but uh, I, I don't claim to be perfect in any way, shape, or form. Again, what I'm trying to do is assess a concept that's being put forth quite, quite strongly by many people, saying that I should believe this or perish, and that certain laws and things are going to be enacted here on earth while I'm here, based on so um, I'm going to assess this, this, and uh, I'm not trying to undermine God's love or justice. Again, the concept is what I'm having difficulty with. I don't believe I'm undermining an actual being, partially because the concept is incoherent to me. The concept itself doesn't make sense. Uh, I mentioned thought crimes and whatnot, and at one point he said, 
So why not ignore all the Christians you can't stand? Turn off the internet and the TV and whatever, what other distractions you have uh, allowed to come between you and God and focus on the Word of God for a day, a week, a month, a year, a decade, however long it takes. <clears throat> a decade, my goodness. Ask Him in all sincerity to reveal His truth to you because you want to know Him. He has promised to those who will humble themselves before him and seek all truth and righteousness like a dying man searches for water in the desert that he will draw near to them and draw them near to him. All I can personally attest to having taken him at his word and found him faithful. Yeah, I'm going to break that. Um, <clears throat> sorry to say, but once again, that's incoherent to say to someone who doesn't believe in the first place. There's no way for me to make that honest, and I'm being as honest as I can here, to make that honest of a plea. And I've actually done it before in as honest a way as I am capable, considering I don't believe. It's very, very difficult to do. And I would say the easiest way to help you understand that would be to implore you to do the same with some other God that you don't believe in. How honestly could you seek Thor or, you know, take your pick, right? How honestly could you do that? <clears throat> How long could you do that? A decade? <laughs> I doubt it, right? I tried to respond to that in the comments and, and uh, um, you know, I basically said, I appreciate that you quote unquote wish I knew him. And, and I do. I, I think that's a genuine sentiment. And yet, it's a difficult one, because he says, I wish you knew him. He wishes that I was saved. But what, where does that sentiment go um, once, once, say, you're saved and, and you go to heaven, and you think of all those people that you knew, that you enjoyed, you appreciated, you thought were actually good people, if only they could see if only they would just believe they could have been saved. Arguably, some of your own friends and family. Do you just make greater good arguments? I'm not sure. I, I just, I honestly do not understand how you could cope with knowing that a lot of what you would deem to be really good people uh, perished. You know, by perish, of course, I mean suffer eternally in a lake of fire because they simply couldn't be convinced. Not because they sinned more than you, maybe even. Maybe some of us sin less than you do. We're all sinners, right? <clears throat> Certainly, accepting Jesus Christ doesn't mean you stop sinning. I, I, I don't know how you would reconcile that, uh, you know, in heaven. In any case, I did think it was interesting to to think about the free will argument with respect to evil. <clears throat> and I was also thinking about demons, because demons have come up quite a bit lately. Not as serious topics all that much, but mostly as accusations when certain Christian theists get tired of, tired of dealing with arguments they don't like. They say, oh, the demons in your head are acting up, you know. But there is a belief in demonic possession. There is a belief in demons. Demons are scriptural. And um, I don't know. Uh, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Demons began to exist. Did you create the demons? I didn't create the demons. What about you? I'm not sure how you can say God escapes responsibility for moral evil. That's all I'm saying. Um, it's much like I said in a recent video, the debate on human ownership of other human beings has concluded. Thank you for your participation. I think the debate on whether or not God is ultimately responsible for moral evil has concluded. Mm -hmm.